Does your scooter's battery keep going dead? You charge it up and everything works great, but after the scooter sits for a few days, it's flat again. Well, that sounds like you have an electrical system issue. In this episode, I'll be teaching you how to troubleshoot a parasitic drain and charging system issues using this Genuine Buddy 150. Now the Genuine Buddies use an engine that is a GY6 variant. That means that it's loosely based on the GY6 platform, but some of the components are a little bit different. And that means you can use this video to troubleshoot scooters made by Tau Tau, Lance, Sim, Italica, Wolf, and a whole lot of others. And the concepts in this video can be used to troubleshoot all different kinds of motorcycles and scooters. If you think you know what's wrong with your scooter, or you'd like to skip around in the video for any other reason, there are skip links in the description below. Now let's take a minute to talk about the tools that you're going to need to get this job done. You'll need some screwdrivers and a basic socket set to gain access to your various electrical components. You'll need a tray to keep track of your loose nuts and bolts. I recommend a magnetic one like this. But most importantly, you'll need a good multimeter. Now multimeters come in all shapes, sizes, and prices. A $5 multimeter might seem tempting, but it might not be accurate enough to get a proper diagnosis. On the other hand, if you're not a professional technician and you're not going to use it every day, it doesn't make sense to spend $400 on a multimeter. What's most important is that your meter has the proper functions. For this job, you're going to need an AC voltage function, a DC voltage function, and a fused ammeter to get a proper diagnosis. Now your first step is going to be to charge your battery. The battery needs a full charge and needs to be in good condition to properly diagnose your system. If the battery has been discharged too many times or has been left dead for a long period of time, it's a good idea to just replace it with a known good one. A healthy battery will have a resting voltage of around 12.6 volts. Your next step is going to be to make sure your battery is properly installed using the correct hardware. You also need to make sure that that hardware is tight. Next, we're going to dive right in and check your scooter's charging system. Set your multimeter to the DC voltage function and attach your leads to the battery. Attach the black lead to the negative terminal and attach your red lead to the positive terminal. Make sure your scooter is on its center stand and that it's stable and then start the engine. At idle, your scooter's charging system should be producing around 13 volts DC. Now rev your engine to simulate driving. The scooter's charging system should now be producing somewhere around 14 and a half volts DC and this voltage should never exceed 15 and a half volts. Here's a quick and dirty rundown of how your scooter's charging system works. Now there's a large rotating magnet connected to your scooter's crankshaft. In the center of that magnet is the stator. Now the stator is comprised of copper wires that have been coiled and wound around themselves thousands of times. As the magnet passes over these windings, it produces alternating current, or AC. And the faster the magnet moves, the more voltage is produced. But your scooter's battery operates on 12 volts DC, or direct current. So the system needs a regulator rectifier. Now the regulator rectifier does two things. The first thing is, it takes the alternating current produced by the stator, and it converts it to direct current, which the battery can accept. But the second thing it does is it regulates the amount of voltage going into the battery, because the battery can be damaged if the current fed to it is higher than 15 volts. And now that you understand how your charging system operates, you can diagnose the system by breaking it into its individual components. Now on almost every scooter, the stator is located behind the cooling fan. Locate the stator's wire loom as it exits the cooling fan shroud and leads underneath the seat. Follow that wire loom until it terminates in a connector. Usually that connector will have three wires going to it, and most of the time the wires are white or yellow, or some combination of those two colors. In this case, 
the wire connector has a white, a yellow, and a black wire. Disconnect that connector. Now, connect the red lead of your multimeter to one of the stator side pins of that connector. Connect your black lead of your multimeter to the negative battery terminal or a suitable ground. Set your multimeter to AC voltage and start the engine. At idle, you should have somewhere around 10 volts AC. And as you rev the engine, the voltage should increase and it should go upwards of 40 volts AC. Each one of these wires in the connector is a separate winding to the stator. If one or more of the windings does not produce 10 volts AC at idle and does not exceed 40 volts AC when revved, the stator is going to need to be replaced. On most scooters, the regulator rectifier is behind this front panel. You're going to need to remove that front panel to gain access to the regulator rectifier. You'll find the regulator rectifier bolted to the frame somewhere and it'll have metal cooling fins and a wire connector. This wire connector will have the same color wires that come out of your stator. In addition to those wires, it should have a red wire that goes directly to the battery. And on some regulator rectifiers, it'll have a separate grounding wire. With the engine running and the stator connected, back probe the red wire that connects the battery to the regulator rectifier. Make sure that your multimeter is set to DC current. Now when you rev the engine, if there's upwards of 14 volts DC present on this wire, your problem exists somewhere between the regulator rectifier and the battery. If the battery voltage doesn't increase past its standing voltage, around 12 volts, when you rev the engine, make sure that your regulator rectifier is properly grounded and properly mounted. Disconnect the wire connector to the regulator rectifier and check each of the wires that lead from the stator to see if they have the same current as when they exited the stator. If those three wires have the same current as they did when you checked it before and your grounds are all good, it's safe to assume you have a bad regulator rectifier. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm going to assume your charging system checks out. That means that there's something else draining your battery. Now finding the source of this parasitic drain can be time consuming and frustrating. But here's how you get it done. Now your first move is going to be to turn the scooter off and remove your key from the ignition. Next, disconnect the negative battery cable. Now select the amp function on your meter and connect the red lead to the negative battery cable and the black lead to the battery terminal. You're now measuring all the current flowing through your scooter. Ideally, with everything off, your meter should be reading 0, 0.000 amps. If you have a reading of anything higher than 4 milliamps or 0 0.004 amps, you have a problem. Now to find out what's draining your battery, you're simply going to unplug electrical components one by one until your meter reads 0, 0.000. Some common sources of parasitic drain on scooters are ignition switches, CDIs, tail lights, and voltage regulators. But don't rule out unusual components like headlights and digital dashes and even cigarette lighters. Well, I hope this video empowered you to take this problem into your own hands. Maybe it even shed some light on your scooter's electrical system. If this video helped you out, or if you have suggestions for future Scooter 911 episodes, leave me a comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Now remember, a scooter is just a bucket of bolts, and the people who work on them aren't smarter than you. So until next time, Keep it shiny side up. Make sure that that hardware is tight. In a car, why would you drive by right now? I'm so mad. Dang that plane. I'm sure you can hear it. So close. Oh, it was close. Oh, man, that was almost good. You can dirty rundown of how you're... Ah, la, 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 la. Uh,